now at 11. Another close encounter with a coyote, and this time it was right by a school. You may see it every day, piles of trash left behind by homeless campers. The solutions now Portland plans to try to clean up the city. That gift exchange your Facebook friends are posting about may actually be illegal. First at 11, we have an update on breaking news of a SWAT standoff in Marion County. This evening, police responded to a domestic disturbance in the town of Marion and found an armed and wanted man. Let's get right out to KGW's Mike Benner. He's live at the sheriff's office for us tonight. Mike, the standoff is over. What else can you tell us? Yeah, that's right, Dan. This ended within the last half hour or so. The man at the center of this whole thing identified as 51-year-old John Rousseau. He is on his way to the hospital for injuries he sustained during this hours-long standoff. A tense night for sure. Deputies trying a bunch of different tactics to bring this to a safe conclusion. Take a look. Our camera, the only one there enrolling as SWAT officers shot gas canisters into a home to flush out the suspect. You'll notice deputies then backing away slowly. This happened around 8 o'clock tonight, several hours after the standoff originally started. Now we're told around 2.15 is when uh, deputies this afternoon responded to the home on Staten Road Southeast in the small town of Marion, just to the southeast of Salem. Reports of a domestic disturbance. A woman had already escaped the home, but deputies were confronted by that wanted man armed with a knife and, listen to this, a rifle as well. Deputies decided to retreat and call for backup. There was a reverse 911 call to neighbors urging them to stay inside as this all unfolded. Sheriff's deputies weren't taking any chances. Take a listen. It's anybody's best guess of how this will resolve. Uh, we have it one way, the way we want it to go, and obviously that's with him peacefully coming out and, and us walking away. But, of course, we know that... that that other things can happen and so we're going to take the the most precaution that we can to try and, and make sure everybody's safe to include all the residents around the house and again this all ended within the last half hour or so you are looking at an old mug shot of the suspect identified as 51 year old john rousseau he had warrants for criminal mischief and unlawful use of a motor vehicle and after tonight he'll be facing charges of menacing and unlawful use of a weapon. A wild uh, night down here for sure. Deputies relieved it is finally over. Back to you in Portland. Hey, frightening evening for that community, Mike. Thank you. We're also following breaking news of a woman hit and killed by a car in Northeast Portland. This happened on Airport Way at 138th Avenue. That's where we find KGW's Catherine Cook. Catherine, what can you tell us about this? Well, Laurel, first, a traffic update for you. Airport Way is closed from here on 122nd through 138th for this traffic investigation. Now, the crash happened just before 9 o'clock tonight. The victim is a woman. When police got here, they found her body under a black Lincoln Navigator. Investigators say it looks like the SUV had been heading east on Airport Way and hit the woman who was walking in the roadway. The driver did stay on scene and is cooperating with police. Investigators say at this point they don't think intoxication was a factor in the crash. They have not released the victim's name yet as next of kin is still being notified. If you have any information on this crash, though, you are asked to call the Portland Police non-emergency line. Dan and Laurel, back to you. All right, Catherine, thank you for that update. Now we want to get you guys at home caught up in some other stories that are also new tonight. Well, first, there's been a third close encounter with a coyote in the metro area. This just in the past month. Tonight, a mother reports a coyote ran toward her and her child near Conestoga Middle School in Beaverton. Police went out to look for the animal. They couldn't find it. Oregon Fish and Wildlife officials are telling people be on the lookout for coyotes exhibiting strange behavior like this. It comes after two children were bitten and scratched by coyotes in separate incidents, both near the Fano Creek natural area. A 71 year old man is in the hospital now. He was hit by a car while stopping to fix his own vehicle. Apparently the man's truck broke down on Highway 47 in Forest Grove. When he was outside of that truck, he was then hit by another driver. Now that driver has been cited for careless driving. The victim, we're told, is in serious condition. And Portland firefighters now believe several small brush fires along I-84 today may have been intentionally set. The fires burn near the Gateway Green Park at 84 and 205. Portland Fire tells us it thinks the fires may be connected to a string of arsons in the same area this past summer. 
Also developing tonight, the deadliest fire in California history. The death toll now has risen to at least 50, they say, as recovery crews search through the torched areas by this fire. And as we speak, two fires are still burning. One near Los Angeles, where many are waiting for new evacuation orders. The other, north of Sacramento, where hundreds of people are still unaccounted for. The magnitude of the fire can be hard to fathom, with nearly 8,000 homes and businesses destroyed. In a population bigger than Tigard or Albany, displaced entirely My car. from neighborhoods that now look like this. It's to me like an apocalypse that God's on vacation and he's not taking care of it. The campfire in Northern California hasn't responded to prayers or the efforts of firefighters battling a fire line that stretches for miles. Tragedy continues. There's a search for lives. It continues. In the town of Paradise, people add names to a list of the missing as forensic teams work to identify the dozens of people who we know never made it out. Mandatory evacuations are underway. Near L.A., a shift in the winds brought new, mandatory, and immediate evacuations. You can see the wind is still blowing. We're not out of the woods yet. Some neighbors who thought they'd been spared had to run as anxiety grows and the looming disaster continues to haunt California. I didn't think it was coming back this way, but it looks like it's going to head, I don't know. If, you, uh, if you're looking at those images and thinking that you would like to help, there are many ways to do so, and one is as simple as getting your coffee. Dutch Bros is matching up to $150,000 in donations. Just drop through one of their drive throughs any of the locations between now and next Monday. Already people were lining up this morning to donate. Literally 5 a.m. and everyone was like, oh, how do we donate? And I was like, I don't have the buttons up yet, but you can do cash. Yeah. And so everyone was already doing it. We already have a bucket going. People are super excited to help out. And it continues into this evening. We drove by one tonight, uh, the one in Lloyd Center. The line there was pretty long, so people are doing their part. If you want to learn uh, more about some other ways to donate and to help out, just visit our website, kgw.com. It was the Portland hate crime that sent shockwaves across this nation. A college student from Ethiopia murdered in front of his house by a group of white supremacists. Now, 30 years later, loved ones and the city are honoring him. KGW's Catherine Cook gives us a look at the tributes. In Southeast Portland, it's a tribute 30 years in the making. These new sign toppers honor Mulugeta Sarau. He was a very sweet, uh, kind kid. The 28-year-old college student from Ethiopia was murdered here, beaten to death by a group of white supremacists. That is the worst news I received in my entire life. Mulugeta's uncle, Engadao Brahanu, will never forget that day and sees parallels between then and now. Things I don't think have improved since then. Um, in fact, they may have gotten worse. So the parallel would be when the max murder. Dr. Randy Blazak chairs the Oregon Coalition Against Hate Crimes. He's also an expert on white supremacists. When Mulugeta was murdered, he was with them undercover. I was with a group of skinheads in Orlando, Florida uh, when I heard that it happened and they were quite excited. They, they were thinking that this was going to be their time, that they were going to start their revolution and Sarah was the first casualty. While the skinhead movement has mostly disbanded, Blazak says others have replaced it. The Proud Boys and the alt-right, I mean it's just sort of a new version of, of the same hate that we saw in the 80s and the 90s. Blazak believes what has changed in 30 years is society's response to hate crimes, how it cares for victims, families, and communities. Tributes like this. To effect change, uh, I want to, that to be his uh, uh, tribute. And educating the public to love instead of hate. If another family is spared from our tragedy by presenting programs like this, his death would have not been in vain. And tomorrow morning, PBOT will dedicate those street sign toppers on Southeast 31st and Pine. And tomorrow afternoon at City Hall, the mayor will read a proclamation declaring November 13th, Mulugeta Sarah Day. So one of the biggest complaints about homeless camps in Portland is all the trash that piles up. It's an ugly situation. It can be a health hazard. And today, Metro brought dozens of people together to try and come up with some solutions here. Now, last year, the city of Portland reporting, get this, it picked up 8,400 gallons of human waste, along with 346,000 hypodermic needles. We spoke to a housing advocate who thinks that it would help if homeless people were allowed to stay in small communities. 
I think when folks have a space that is theirs that they can stay put at, we have much better ability to maintain and manage garbage and recycling um, and folks having access to hygiene in those situations. Another solution that was discussed in North Portland, volunteers pick up garbage from homeless camps twice a week. So that's their method. Uh, the Metro is trying something similar as a pilot project right now, joining with some agencies that help the homeless by handing out garbage bags and then picking them up later. New tonight, the city of Salem has passed a plastic bag ban. Businesses will have to stop using plastic bags by April or September of next year, depending on how big the business is. They also have to charge at least five cents for a paper bag. This again is in Salem. Portland was the first city in Oregon to ban single use plastic bags back in 2011. Trendsetters. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, a beloved barbecue restaurant in Northeast Portland back open 18 months after it burned down. Rio's Rib, so glad it's back. It caught fire back in May of 2017. Investigators still don't know exactly what caused the fire, but they do say it wasn't arson. Rio's rebuilt right in the same location. The Hollywood district smells really great there again with all that barbecue flavoring at Northeast 42nd and Sandy. The restaurant reopened last Thursday and since then, while well, the customers have just been pouring in. Rio does a good job with the community. He's a loving guy and the food is just awesome here and just excited for them to get back open. I grew up on the East Coast, kind of in the southern part of the country, so these are all very, you know, cherished flavors for me, so it's cool to, to find them in this, this side of the country. The owner, Rio Vernardo, has some celebrity ties too. He's Snoop Dogg's uncle. I love that. And he says he's hoping to have his nephew here for a real grand opening. We're kind of hoping he writes a rap about Rio's ribs. What kind, what kind of rap? A rib rap. <laughs> it has a ring to it, doesn't it? It does. It sounds good. How cool would that be if Snoop showed up? <laughs> I love it. All right, uh, stick with us, guys. Coming up, it's that time of year. Tis the season right now for online scams. We want to tell you what to watch out for on the Internet, especially on social media as we head into the holidays. Plus, the push to bring back the historic Washington Park train picks up steam. But how Mother Nature might make the project too hard and too expensive. Mother Nature bringing some rain to the Northwest. We've had a little bit of that story so far. More in Washington. It is headed this way. I'll let you know when it'll be here and the latest on the fire weather situation in Southern California.